Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the course on uh, medical biomaterials. We are going to start a new topic that is the metallic biomaterials. Metals have been used as biomaterials for a very, very long time. They are being used uh, from historically, especially after a fracture, um, replacement of bones in uh, dental applications, tying the jaw sometimes uh, artificial teeth, orthodontic applications and uh, in cardiovascular region some uh, high sophisticated uh, metal alloys, shape memory metal alloys are being used in cardiovascular applications. So, metals have been there for very, very long time. They, ha they have several properties which are very advantageous and of course, metals are also used uh, in your biosensors, uh, pacemakers. Um, and so on, especially as uh, lead wires because you need to have metallic uh, uh, ends which can uh, transport current. So, metals have always been used for quite some time. So, we are going to spend some uh, uh, time on metallic biomaterials, where they are being used, um, what are their properties, their advantages, disadvantages and so on actually. As you know, they have got many advantages. Of course, uh, they also have disadvantages like uh, number one corrosion. So, corrosion uh, could lead to uh, metals losing their properties, uh, metal erosion could happen because of corrosion that is one thing. Another thing is metals are uh, very, very strong and uh, when they are used next to bones, um, the most of the load may be taken up by the metals and not by the bone. So, that is called uh, stress shielding. So, metals uh, um, have that dis uh, disadvantage uh, that uh, because of stress shielding the bones do not take the weight, but all the time the metals take the weight. That is uh, another disadvantage of met metals. So, that is why new um, metals alloys are um, being uh, uh, invented. So, that uh, their um, and the, uh, the modulus tries to match with that of the bone. Okay, so, we will look at uh, some of these properties and some of the advantages um, in the next few classes. These are called the metallic biomaterials. Okay. So, where they are used? Like I said bone and joint replacement, uh, joint surgery lot of metals are used chromium, nickel, um, bone after a fracture they use the titanium screws, stainless steel implants, okay. dental implants. Okay. Titanium is widely used especially uh, when they are implanting an artificial tooth because the titanium um, screw acts uh, as the anchor with the jaw. Okay. Maxillof and craniofacial reconstruction after a, an accident, uh, if there is a lot of damage to the jaw and uh, rest of the uh, bones in the head, um, metal wires are used quite a lot to tie up all these ends. Um, so, a lot of uh, um, metals with good very good properties are you tried. Cardiovascular devices, okay, things like uh, um, your uh, artificial um, heart pacemakers, okay, and then left uh, heart assisted devices, pumps. So, all these are cardiovascular devices. Titanium is regularly used in pacemakers, okay. Deep fibrillators <coughs> carry a structure for replacement heart valves, intravascular stents like your uh, cardiovascular stents, metals are used. External prosthesis, external joints, um, external uh, support for bones that are broken inside. Surgical instruments, as you know all the surgical instruments are made up of uh, only metals. So, metals have <coughs> a lot of applications. The beauty of metals is you can make it in any form and shape because metals have been there uh, historically for uh, several thousands of years. Um, so, some of the technology is well developed okay. and um, we can modify their surf, uh, surfaces, we can modify their 
uh, tensile strength and other properties. Uh, so, they find lot of applications, okay. And uh, of course, as you know, the aircraft industries, the space technology um, has developed tremendously in the past 50 years and many of the knowledge from those technologies have also come to biomaterials. For example, um, some of the high-end alloys with very uh, special properties uh, also find their application in biomaterials. Okay. Um, lightweight metals again find uh, applications in biomaterials, okay. porous metals find application in uh, biomaterials. Um, some of the um, combinations of metals and polymers, metals and ceramics are also used quite a lot in space application. Uh, <coughs> they also find application in <coughs> biomaterials. So, um, we have to thank the aircraft industry as well as the space technology for uh, new ideas and inventions that have happened there which get directly tran trans, uh, um, transferred into the area of uh, biomaterials. Okay. What are the advantages? <coughs> they have very good load bearing especially when you are talking about your foot or uh, um, and the bones and the legs they have to carry a lot of load. Okay. Ease of fabrication, it is very simple as I said thousands of years have evolved in the metal uh, fabrication preparation of alloys. So, they are very simple, very simple shapes, very complex shapes can be easily made. Wide fabrication techniques we can do by casting, forging, machining. So, so many different fabrication techniques are available for metals. We do not have such um, if you take um, polymers or even uh, uh, non-metals uh, like ceramics. Okay. Of course, polymers also have some fabrication techniques, but nothing to beat uh, this. Good fracture resistance. What is this fracture resistance? Suppose if there is a crack that is developed, um, that does not mean uh, it will completely break, but it takes some time for it to break. Um, whereas, if you take a ceramic, as soon as a crack is developed, it may break very fast. Okay, the fracture resistance is very poor. If you take a polymer, that also has poor fracture resistance, but if you take a metal, even if there are cracks, the propagation of the cracks and the development of the crack into a, so that the material fails is longer. They have very good electrical conductivity. So, of course, we use uh, this in many applications um, in biosensors, uh, lead wires. So, all these places you are going to have metals only. Formability, we can make it in any form. Okay. So, all these are extremely useful. Uh, they are used of course, as I said in orthopedics, dentistry, cardiovascular like artificial heart valves, blood conduits, heart assist device. Okay. Left, sometimes um, uh, pay, some uh, people um, have their left uh, part of the heart not functioning properly. This could be as a congenital or it happened because of certain diseases. So, the uh, even if amount of blood is not pumped to the body. So, what happens? They have some external device connected. So, this is called an assist device. Okay. Uh, so, the external device actually uh, helps to pump enough blood um, out of the heart into the body. They are called assist devices and uh, um, of course, they are made up of pumps and the pumps are made up of metals. Vascular stents, the stents that are used um, inside after uh, yeah, um, angioplasty, okay, that is called a titanium. Now, they have titanium nickel. Now, we have titanium nickel um, bare metal or sometimes it is coated with drugs. So, all these are metals. Neurovascular implants, aneurysm clips, okay, all these clips which try to bring uh, um, uh, the skins and tissues together neuromuscular stimulation devices, cardiac pacemakers. Okay. So, all these areas uh, metals are used. Stainless steel, it is very, very useful. It is used in uh, uh, osteo okay, all um, okay, related to joints, okay, os stainless steel is used. Cobalt, chromium, molybdenum type of alloys, again a joint orthoplasty, osteosynthesis, cobalt nickel alloys, osteosynthesis joint, um, okay, commercially pure titanium osteosynthesis, different types of titanium alloys joint 
arthroplasty and osteosynthesis, beta, near beta titanium alloys osteosynthesis, nickel titanium osteosynthesis, tantalum bone augmentation. So, stainless steel and several alloys, nickel, they are all used quite a lot in orthopedic area. Uh, this table is adapted from this particular reference. Okay. So, um, what are the physical properties? Shine, shininess, okay, luster. That is uh, not really important uh, if the material is placed inside the body, but it is important if it is outside the body. Good conductor of heat and electricity. So, that is uh, useful. So, it can quickly dissipate heat. Okay, and uh, unlike polymers, which will not dissipate heat, high density. Okay, uh, so they are heavy for their size. So a small piece of metal may weigh much more than the similar size of polymer. High melting point. That's also very useful. Um, okay, ductile. So we can draw it into very very thin wires. So um, especially if you are connecting uh, many parts, um, then it has to be metallic wires. Malleable, we can hammer it and make it into very thin shapes. That is the beauty of uh, metal. So, we can have very, very thin um, material uh, thickness going right up to microns. It may be very difficult for you to make it in uh, non metals. These are physical properties of metals. Similarly, we have chemical properties. They easily lose electrons, though so they can get charged on the surface. They are surface reactive. So, um, if you want to add some surface groups or modify the surfaces, these uh, metals are very good. They corrode easily, that is a uh, disadvantage. Stainless steel, they can start corroding. That is why uh, now, uh, stainless steel is good for short, short duration, ideally titanium may be better for long duration. So, the corrosion is problem. When it starts corroding slowly, the material can wear away. Okay, so, if I am having a joint and uh, slowly uh, apart from the normal mechanical wearing, if there is going to be corrosion, they can start wearing out and corrosion also can form oxides. These oxides could be um, having lesser strength when compared to the metal. So, there could be changes in mechanical properties. So, mechanical properties changes because of uh, corrosion, because of wearing, because of oxide formation um, and so on actually. So, that can also happen over a longer period of time. Okay. Titanium, okay. titanium is used quite a lot, um, 2.2 million pounds of titanium implanted away, that is a big number. Okay. So, if even if you suppose you divide by 2.2, then that is 1 million kg of titanium implanted. Hip joints, bone screws. Okay. So, um, if they are uh, keeping a metal next to a broken bone, they are connected by screws, knee joints, lot of metals and lot of uh, um, alloys, cobalt, chromium are used, bone plates, stainless steel, titanium, dental implants, surgical devices, pacemakers, all these um, titanium is used. Titanium, the beauty of it is uh, its resistance to um, attack by body fluids okay. and it has got a very high strength and low modulus unlike stainless steel. Stainless steel has very high modulus. If you remember almost 200 plus, okay, um, whereas titanium is almost half. But of course, we need to still come down if you want to match the bone uh, which is about 40 or something. So, titanium of course, is try, trying to come down. So, titanium alloys are coming down below 100. There is something called commercially pure titanium, CP titanium. So, most load bearing permanent implants due because they have low density. Okay. So, their modulus is slowly, slowly closer to the real bone. They have good corrosion properties, okay. but they have poor properties in articulation. That is the disadvantage of uh, this particular uh, material. But otherwise, uh, the CP titanium has got a lot of uh, advantages. Titanium alloys, there are uh, um, many other metals like vanadium, aluminum, niobium, molybdenum, iron are mixed with titanium to form alloys. Uh, these alloys have very good uh, 
um, properties, um, okay, they reduce the modulus further, okay, they also try to give them shape memory property. Stainless steel, of course, it is very cheap, so it is widely used the 316 and 316L. This L means it has got less carbon, okay, and so it is much better than uh, 316, so 316L is used in many implants, okay. But uh, stainless steel is widely used because uh, they are cheap, they have a lot of good properties, um, okay. They give good strength, hardness and so on. But of course, it can corrode inside the body, especially when they are stressed, when uh, you have oxygen depletion uh, and when they are in contact and the screws or fracture plates, okay. So, they are good for temporary implant purposes. Uh, fracture plates. Idea is uh, once the fracture um, is uh, healed, they can be removed. Screws, hip nails. So we call this more of a temporary implant. Hydroxyapatite coating. This is a inorganic material. Um, Hydroxyapatite. Okay. Um, so what it does? It improves the surface property. It helps for osteointegration. For example, if I use stainless steel, it's very inert. So the bone um, and the cells do not integrate, whereas when I coat it with hydroxyapatite, it helps in the also integration. For example, um, there is an example, bio integration with hydroxyapatite coating, 90 percent of the implant gets uh, um, bio integrated with the bone in 10 months contact, whereas if it is pure titanium without any coating of uh, HA, uh, in 10 weeks, 50 percent of the in Okay, in 10 months, 50 percent of the implant only um, contact in 10 months. So, it is of course, not very good and as you can see hydroxyapatite is much better. Uh, of course, hydroxyapatite um, is not stable because it is an inorganic material and uh, number one, number two, it is uh, susceptible to bacterial in infection okay. and uh, hydroxyapatite is a calcium phosphate. I think by calcium phosphate. So, um, but there is a lot of uh, interest in hydroxyapatite. They are being used uh, in dental application, they are used in bone uh, filling and so on. We will talk more about it later. It is an inorganic material, um, okay. it comes under that family of ceramics because they have this osteo, osteo, um, osteo integration properties. That means they can easily uh, integrate with the bone much easier when compared to bare titanium. Dental alloys, okay. this is another big area um, where uh, metals are used. Filling in teeth, dental amalgams, I think dental amalgams are being used like mercury based for uh, hundreds and hundreds of years, even thousands of years I would say. Um, when uh, dentistry became popular almost thousand years back where they used uh, silver and mercury, copper and mercury, strontium and mercury and so on, uh, because the beauty of uh, mercury is it can easily adapt uh, to the uh, shape and gap and fills up and uh, quickly um, okay, solidifies. That is why um, amalgam be is being still used quite popular. There, were, there is some worry that uh, mercury may be leaching out and create uh, poison, poisonous effect to the user but it has still not been proved and the beauty of mercury as I said is they can easily solidify into any form. So, it is used in filling up uh, of uh, carries, gaps and so on actually. So, dental amalgams are very widely used, crowns, bridges, fabricating crowns and bridges that is the top of the teeth, noble metals and base metal alloys. So, they are being used. Partial denture frameworks, okay. so again base metal alloys are used. It is partial denture and on top of that you may even put in PMMA based uh, front end because PMMA that is polymethyl methacrylate is uh, uh, of same color as your teeth. Orthodontic wires and brackets like I mentioned if there is a, a, a an accident and a facial reconstruction has to be done or jaw reconstruction has to be done, um, wires are used quite a lot, brackets are used. They are called orthodontic wires and brackets, stainless steel, titanium alloys, nickel titanium alloys are widely used. Dental implants, 
commercially pure titanium, different types of titanium grades are used in dental implants. Okay. So, here uh, high intrinsic strength and fracture resistance that is very important intrinsic strength because teeth uh, there is a lot of mechanical activities taking place the jaws move up and down um, so teeth uh, come in contact with each other and they have to, uh, they come in contact with the food um, and then a lot of body fluids are there um, enzymes are coming out bacteria are uh, being uh, um, produced so teeth i think is quite a harsh environment where there is going to be a lot of wear and tear because your teeth uh, moves uh, all the time and of course biocompatibility since they come in contact with the body tissues okay not only your mouth inner part of the mouth the tongue the saliva uh, other fluids okay so it's in contact with so many supportive soft tissues so dental is extremely complicated area um, and i would say uh, another area is your urinary tract um, where you have bacteria, salts, uh, dental is also very complicated area because in dental we also have bacteria, um, both aerobic, anaerobic bacteria, enzymes from your saliva and body fluids, soft tissues, then your hard jaw uh, and so on actually. So, it is a challenge designing material uh, which will last for a long time and as well as take care of strength and wear and all those things. Okay. Dental amalgams, they are susceptible to corrosion, the build up of the corrosion product serves to limit the rate of further corrosion. So, the, these corrosion products form a seal at the amalgam tooth interface. Okay. Another problem is if uh, they, um, the coefficient of expansion are different with respect to the teeth, then um, during uh, if they are getting heated up or cooled, especially when we take hot liquid or cold, there could be gaps created because uh, uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion between the dentin that is your tooth material and the um, artificial metals placed uh, may be different. We did a problem if you remember long time back. Okay. Advantage of dental amalgams, easy in situ formability to your desired shape. So, uh, if you have seen a doctor, they place uh, the mercury. Uh, amalgam inside a tooth gap where there is a caries and they press it very very hard and uh, after some time uh, it uh, sets and forms. Okay. Of course, as I said the mercury toxicity is, is a concern, but there is no proof um, that mercury leaches out and creates problem to the user. Okay. Still it is not very clear. Alloys, dental casting alloys gold, cobalt, nickel, titanium all these are um, used, they are used for making dental bridges. Okay. So, if you are connecting um, one tooth to another top portion, crowns making of the top of that. Okay. Um, what do they do? They make uh, metal and then on top they will have a porcelain fused to a metal. Okay. So, it will look like a real teeth, but inside it will be metal because it has to take care of lot of load, corrosion and so on actually. Inlays, onlays, entodontic posts all these are metals. Okay. So, they should have sufficient strength, toughness they have to be really tough, um, wear resistance because there is lot of activity that is going on, mechanical activity between teeth and teeth and food and other particles, corrosion resistance like I said uh, um, there is air coming in. Um, and uh, there are a lot of chemicals produced due to the body fluids. So, they have to be uh, able to resist corrosion and they should be of course, biocompatible because uh, it is in contact with the soft tissues, hard tissues, body fluids and so on. So, compatible thermal expansion coefficients of metal and porcelain cladding this is a problem which we looked at long time back good bonding of porcelain to the dental alloy. So, I am putting a porcelain on top of my uh, okay, the metal. So, there has to be good bonding. Corrosion resistance as I said again coming back corrosion has to be completely uh, be nil. So, it should be able to last for a very very long time. Then wrought stainless steel, cobalt, chromium, nickel, beta, titanium, nitinol alloys are used for making 
these orthodontic wires, high yield strength, low elastic modulus. So, um, low elastic modulus we need to have because we want to match uh, with your uh, bone uh, modulus of the bone that is very, very important. So, a lot of uh, novel materials combinations, nitinol and so on are being looked at. More dental alloys, they have a gold silver alloys, okay. uh, as you can see different types of gold silver alloys, silver copper alloys, different types of silver and copper, silver tin alloys, okay. all these are dental alloys used uh, quite a lot in bridges, okay. uh, inner cladding, outer cladding and so on. Then other alloys, cobalt chromium alloys, cobalt chromium nickel alloys, nickel titanium alloys such as nitinol, they are called super elastic wires, mostly they are used in wires orthodontic wires uh, holding the jaw with the rest of the and then uh, cranial wires which keeps the very uh, broken uh, um, um, parts of the cranium together. So, a lot of um, metals are used um, in this particular area. Okay. So, a lot of uh, metals and alloys as you can see chromium, nickel, titanium uh, and then of course, uh, the metal amalgams all are used in dental applications. Okay. So, let me show some pictures, um, look at this, this is commercial pure titanium. Okay. So, these are called titanium cages, um, they are used in uh, uh, bone segments, if there is a breakage and the bones, there is a gap between bones, um, they put in titanium cages. Okay. Uh, how do they, they, they may fill up with HA, sometimes they fill up with allograft, that means they will take some uh, parts of the bones from the patient, uh, powder it, they may fill it up. Sometimes they may even put in calcium sulphate, hydroxapyrate and then I put the, this material back uh, and fill up the gap. Okay. Commercially pure titanium, these are cages. These are titanium nickel, anodized titanium nickel as you can see, different types of uh, anodized titanium nickel combinations here used here. Okay, so, we can see the titanium cages here, the one which I showed in the previous picture. Okay, so, they may have a allograft or calcium sulphate field um, which is put here as you can see and then there is a nail which may go like this, that is called the intramedular nail with titanium allograft cages here. So, this is uh, um, a defect where you have the bones and there is a big gap that is created that is called a long bone long bone segment defect. So, they keep the titanium allograft and there is a medullar nail which goes runs through again that nail which is called the intramedullar nail again that is made up of uh, metal. Um, these are stainless steel bone plates used after fracture as you can see. Um, so, uh, this uh, you have the bone and you have this plate and they are uh, attached with each other using screws here. So, we can have uh, screws all along as you can see in this picture. So, uh, they keep the bone plate here uh, this is an x-ray picture they keep the bone plate here and they are screwing it up here okay, to the bone okay, depending upon how stiff you want to have uh, the bone plate connected to the bone either you can make it uh, um, very, very flexible and very, very uh, minimal fixer or we can have maximum fixing by having more uh, screws here uh, as you can see in this picture. Uh, magnesium is also used uh, or being uh, looked at uh, as a possible candidate instead of uh, titanium uh, for long bone segmental defect, especially um, if the uh, gap between bones are very long because magnesium has this biodegradable property unlike titanium. Um, so, hopefully once the bones have joined with each other, by the time magnesium will slowly start uh, degrading. Okay. This is called a magnesium cage, these are magnesium tubes. Whereas, uh, if you are using titanium, uh, it will be remaining there permanently. So, can we have a biodegradable material, slowly biodegradable material, so that uh, um, once the bone has formed, maybe it can completely disappear. So, magnesium is being looked at as a possible um, biodegradable you know, material for long bone segmental defect. Okay. So, in the titanium cage uh, as I said that they may fill it up with calcium sulphate or hydroxapyrate or even allografts 
Euler graft means um, the, the, the from the patient himself or herself they may take the powdered bone and fill it up uh, and then keep the titanium cage in that gap okay that's called allograft okay so uh, these are some titanium bone plate as you can see in this picture okay same thing just like stainless steel bone plate we also have the titanium bone plate here it is used as a fracture and it is as you can see in this fracture picture uh, they are kept here and you can see the x-ray pictures here and then uh, you can screw it up okay all these holes are used for screwing it up with the, the bone these are uh, two different uh, pictures uh, so uh, this titanium is able to hold your bone well in its place um, these are some uh, photographs courtesy uh, of uh, the Christian Medical Center it is in a hospital in Bellur, South India, uh, one of the best hospitals for quite a lot of uh, orthopedic uh, surgery. Uh, so, we got these pictures from uh, Dr. Bhupalan of CMC Vellur, who is an orthopedic surgeon. So, um, stainless steel bone plates, um, sorry, stainless steel bone plates, titanium bone plates are used quite, uh, magnesium is being also looked at for long bone segmental defect that is filling up of uh, um, gaps between two bones or even uh, titanium cages okay, filled with uh, some uh, inorganic material as a possible filler for uh, curing uh, long bone segmental defects. Okay. So, we will uh, continue in the next class more on the um, properties of metals and advantages and disadvantages of various materials. Thank you very much for your time.